Okay, so we're going to build another real quick, easy structure. And a lot of the big yards, especially during the steam days, and it did, they did last even into diesel days, even Grafton today has some of these in the model railroad. Uh, but we're going to scratch build some fire boxes. So stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. I am Mark Stewart. This is Stu Structures and we are going to uh, make some little fire boxes like I explained in my intro there. Um, these were something that were common in all yards especially uh, in big time back in the steam days. They were all over the place because steam locomotives had a way of starting fires. Uh, dropping coals or just sparks or you know various things they just they did start fires here and there and especially in areas where maintenance was done where there's a possibility of fuel laying around or various things like that it was a very volatile area so they had these little uh, fire sheds everywhere with hoses and stuff in them to put out fires immediately if they had to have something on site uh, Grafton had quite a few of these in the yard especially in the steam days uh, so we're going to build some of these to put or use around my layout eventually. Uh, so let's just jump into this and I'll explain what they are and how to build them. Let's go. Now I do have pictures of several of these and you know, they did change over time. This is more of a modern version here with the flat roof. Uh, back in the steam days they had a slightly different roof, uh, more compared to this one here with a point in the center and four sides that come up to that point. And back then they were wooden boxes where most of the modern ones are more uh, metal boxes. Here's one that's even slightly different from those other two. Uh, so they did change over time, but most yards had these. So, you know, we're going to come back and build one of these and it's going to be similar to this one here. Now I do have pictures uh, of one that's at the B&O uh, Museum in Baltimore here and they kind of saved this to restore it and uh, you know so I'm going to build one of these as an open box. Normally you saw them closed in yards um, but this gives you an idea of what it looked like and uh, how it was set up uh, as far as what the interior was and all that uh, but they needed these in the yards. And we do have this drawing out of, uh, you know, one of the books that has shows all the interior details and gives all the dimensions and everything. So it's nice to have those dimensions and stuff to work with as far as a blueprint for building these. So, you know, first I start looking for uh, wood to use for the walls. And I have this basswood that's really nice and thin. So I'm going to take this basswood and uh, cut all the walls out of it. So I cut all four sides, uh, the two back sides I cut a little narrow and the front side a little narrow compared to the two side walls because they're going to overlap in the corners. And I come back and scribe uh, board lines in all these, which they were real narrow boards, you know, three or four inch wide boards in these. So there was just a lot of boards, so I scribed all those. And then I cut plastic for the uh, bottom and the top of them. And this is just a thicker plastic, which kind of gives me some stability because when I put the, uh, you know, groove the holes in the walls, that it kind of makes the wood want to arch a little bit. So this plastic will help uh, get that straightened out as I'm gluing them here and using weights to hold them all nice and flat so the wood, you know, kind of works out its arch. And I do just start with one side connected to the bottom and then add a second side to them and then uh, connect the wood on the corners uh, when I get to that point and just keep adding walls till I get all these done. Now these were set one foot off the ground so I cut a scale four by four and uh, just cut one for each corner and went ahead and mounted all these legs underneath of them. And uh, you know then I went ahead and scribed the, the three of them that I'm going to have closed. The boards on the doors are six inch boards so I went ahead and scribed those six inch boards. And there was also a pipe that fed a hydrant on the inside of these cabinets. And I only need one hydrant and one cabinet that's open but I need the pipes underneath the bases of the others of those. And then there's some trim boards that uh, go around the top and bottom of these. So I just take this uh, basswood that I have here and cut trim boards. 
and you know cut these a little thick I wish they were a little thinner but you know here you can see that added pipe that goes up into it that feeds the hydrant and the bottom trim boards are on now I'm going to take this plastic here and I'm going to start cutting all the pieces that are going to form the angles up from the roofs and you know it has basically about a one foot rise in it so I cut a one foot wide strip then I cut these bottom pieces and the angles that I cut off those pieces I can use for the odd sides and then I come back and just start gluing this plastic into place and I don't need a whole lot of extra bracing on this roof like I do on a lot of the other roofs so you know once I get these plate pieces glued into place that's really all the bracing I'm gonna need even for thin plastic on such a small roof and then you know I go through my uh, uh, paints and find this bright, bright red paint and I go ahead and uh, just put a basic coat of paint on you know the whole shed um, you know then I want to the doors since the doors are on those three I need to start making hinges and uh, you know so I, I just go through and I mark the widths and the points and start cutting out hinges and I just go through and cut out one entire side and then come back the other side of that paper and just you know cut out all these paper hinges and nothing really exciting about it they are a little wider than I would like them to be once I got them on the building I, I noticed that they could have been a little more narrow and the latches that are on the doors these uh, never really locked so I'm using two pieces that overlap on one side and on the other door would have had this piece that swung up and down into the top of that to form a latch so I'm just cutting some of the smallest uh, tiny pre-cut uh, styrene that I have to make these with and they're just in basic pe three pieces and I just you know I come and glue them all together and the one that has the doors open I leave the latch side separate from the hinge side and then you know I come back and put black paint on everything the top uh, wood that goes around the shed will be black the hinges are black and all the latches are black and once those are painted I come back and start painting them now the hinges do wrap the corners of uh, the wood structure too so I glue the face on and then bend the sides back and glue them on after the front is it uh, set up really good and I come back and put all these latches on the fronts of the doors now for the roof I just went through and grabbed all my little tiny pieces that I have this real thin plastic I, I like using scraps and getting rid of scraps as much as I can and I just came through and cut all these and you know they're slightly large I, I'm just having to trim each one individually as I put it on some of them fit exact but most of them are just a hair large and there is some slight difference in them so to come through and hand do each one is not a bad thing it makes them fit really good good excuse me then I just start gluing them on I do the two opposite sides and then the other sides that are left I can make sure the bottoms meet those other first ones that I put on perfectly to form good corners now for roofing material on this it just would have had a real thick uh, tar paper on it type of thing comp composite material they call it uh, but I cut the width that I need for those and then on the corners coming down I'm just need a real thin strip to overlap where those sheets were so I come back and just cut long enough lengths and I let the bottom overlap just a hair because this actually uh, goes down and glues to that uh, band board that wraps the building so you know I just start gluing one side on after the glue set up I trim the paper and go on to the next side and just work my way around the building till I have all four pieces of that done and then I put that real thick thin seam strip you know down all the seams and once that's set up really well then I just use some glue and fold the edges down onto that black wood trim board at the top and glue the top edge down and then put paint on it and basically you know it's an easy simple roof just you know not, nothing complicated about that at all and uh, you know basically that you know gives me the three that I'm not have open uh, finished but then I've got these shelves and interior and all this other little stuff to mount to show in the open one. 
And the first thing I need to do is come back and cut doors. So I cut them for the height to go in between the two band boards. And I scribe boards into the paper. This is just a thick paper and not wood. And I use some uh, trim boards then, some one by sixes to add the two cross members on the boards and the angle boards as well. And I'm just using this uh, Midwest scale lumber to do that. Uh, it's just a nice, reasonable size piece of wood to, to go on there. Now on the insides of the doors were also, you know, a couple of axes and some wrenches for the uh, water valves and all that type of thing that were hanging on the inside of the door. And I just used this real thin piece of plastic and took a pencil and drew them on there and took a knife and cut them out. You know, they're, they're not perfect, but they'll work for what I want. On the inside of that one, I put a hydrant, and one of the rules was that there was always supposed to be a wrench on the top of the valve, so I just glued a piece of styrene to that. And after painting the doors and then, you know, just putting some rough paint on the axes and the, the uh, wrenches, I glued them to the inside of the door, cut these real, real thin pieces of paper, painted them black, and then uh, mounted them across those on the door to, you know, get something to hold them into place that could they could have been removed and, and you know, put in and out of their little holders on the door then. And then, you know... I uh, use this real uh, other styrene here because the shelves are made of open 1x3 slat boards and I really don't have anything of that particular size so I use this styrene and come and cut all the uh, boards that I need to make up the shelves for the inside. And, you know, I use my square here and just start laying out the board underneath and the boards on top overlap the bottom board. So I just come back and start gluing these on and, you know, making these shelves. And after I get enough of them on and square, then I can just put the rest of the boards on easy enough. And one of that, it does both shelves. One of the top shelf, though, has some separators that come up a little higher to keep some hoses separated. And I just cut these two extra pieces of real thin uh, styrene and put those about, you know, separating it into equal thirds on the shelf uh, to give some separation for the hoses on the top shelf. Now for the hoses, I just found this real thick... Uh, uh, I'm not sure what it is, it's string or cord or something, uh, but I took white paint and just painted it to make it look more like hose. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to start, you know, gluing it into place on there the way, you know, that it showed in the diagrams. And for the brass ends on the hoses, I'm just using this 1 16th inch rods and I'm just slicing off tiny slices of the ends of the rods and gluing them onto the end of the hose. And just using a little bit of, I have, I think it's called brass paint or something, but it mimics the brass collar really well. So I just do that and come back and glue those on. I do use a piece of a longer piece of uh, the smaller rod also on one end for a hose. And then I glue that shelf into place and glue the hose onto the end of the hydrant, paint the valve on top of it, a brass collar, and that's the first shelf in place. And the second shelf, you know, is real similar. It has the separators in it and it has three smaller hoses. And I am just make the hose the same way and just glue it into place and then slide that uh, shelf into the top of the cabinet. And basically that's the interior of the cabinet done. You know, it, it's small and it's just tedious to work with. But once you get the glue or the doors uh, painted on here or glued onto the building, you know, it, it gives you a real good view of what's going on in there. And then, you know, the doors to be held open had four befores that came up out of the ground that they could be latched to when they were open so the doors didn't slam shut. So I just go ahead, and the one that's open, I go ahead and glue those to the doors, and the others I just cut to put with the other buildings so when I do mount them on a layout, then I'll have these pre-cut and painted, and I don't have to worry about going back and doing that later. And I'll just put all these in a little small box and store them till I can use them. The hinges I did come back and put red paint on because you know, they, they were just a little wide so I, I think it you know made them look a lot better. So 
thanks for coming back and joining me here on Stu Structures. Uh, you know, there's another quick build out of the way, and you know, in a few evenings you can build, well, even one evening you can build one of the ones that doesn't have the open and the interior showing in them. Uh, you, you didn't see them open very much unless there was actually something going on or somebody working on the box. Most of the time in all the pictures I see are, you know, pictures of closed ones. And, uh, you know, I didn't have the decals, uh, the decals that labeled the fire boxes themselves. I'm going to look at getting into some of those. Somewhere I've got some dry transfer lettering and stuff too. And I, I couldn't find my little file that I keep all that stuff in. So I'm going to look for that. Maybe I've got some small white lettering or press type that I can uh, do this by hand with. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can find that. But in any case, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really a fairly easy build. And if you you have a yard on your model railroad especially steam days these would have been existing but even in modern times they didn't have the four peaked roof on them they basically had more of a slanted flat roof on them uh, but they still exist today even in you know in 2020 they're they're just they are around facilities like this because there's a lot of volatility in fuels and things like that and uh, they needed quick access to something fast to put out those fuels before a lot of damage got done in the yards. Uh, so you know most railroads could use a firebox at some place on them. So anyway, the trim board around the base of it's a little thick. I just used something I had rather than pre-cutting another board or, you know, I'm kind of out of trim boards right now. I need to order some and yeah, things are tight. I just don't spend a lot of money on this hobby. So I try to make most of my own lumber. I do have some trim boards that I've shown you in pictures and packets and uh, I did use some on the inside of those, uh, you know the doors of the open model of this uh, firebox but that's the only last piece of that one that I had so kinda scrimping right now uh, but in any case I like the rest of it the hinges I made were you know a little fat uh, I wish I'd have made them a little more narrow, uh, but after coming back and putting, you know, when I put them on, they were painted black, and they just, they were too obnoxious for me. Uh, so I came back and put the red paint on them, which, you know, in the pictures I see, most all the hinges were painted the same color as the box anyway. Uh, but they look better with the red paint on them, even though they are a little wide for what they are. Uh, so anyway, you could cut a little more narrow hinges and it would look a little more prototypical. The latch on the door is a little heavy, but you know, that's tiny plastic and I, I, I really can't just scratch build something that's a whole lot smaller than that. Um, you know, they're just, I made them with pre-cut uh, plastics. I, I, I guess I could have probably broken out some better magnifiers and done something a little bit smaller but I'm okay with it and the latch system is something that was typical they weren't allowed to lock these boxes uh, so it's something that would have been typical that you would have seen on these boxes uh, so anyway I do like the boxes though they uh, they show up well and uh, you know there'll be a, a nice little viewpoint on the railroad the bright red will stand out amongst you know a lot of the uh, Sut covered steam yard uh, stuff that was in the facilities. Uh, so, anyway, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it. Like and share these videos. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, down beside the subscribe button below this video, you'll see a little bell icon too. If you press that bell icon, then you'll be notified when I have new material coming out and uh, you'll be able to keep up with some of the stuff I'm building. We're doing a lot of quick builds right now. I'm going to get back into something a little heavier. I'm going to play with some trains later on too and do some videos on some of the trains that I'm working on, some of my specialty trains. I drug out my military train. We'll see if we can't get some work done on it and maybe video some of that as well. So anyway, thanks once again. I do appreciate you coming back. Scratch, build some structures. Jump out there and build something small, even if it's something like this to go on your model railroad somewhere and uh, hone your craft, learn how to do this. It's not that hard. It's more time consuming than anything. And, uh, you know, just enjoy your time with the hobby. And happy model railroading.